And we're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Uh, time for us to talk sports. Monday Thomas joins us this morning. Monday, it's good to have you join us. Mercy, thank you so much for having me once again. I'm excited to be talking with you this morning. So let's talk about the Super Falcons and, uh, you know, their performance. How would you read their performance so far, you know, um, with the games? I mean, it's very easy for anyone to read the Super Falcons. I mean, starting from uh, the uh, Wapcon tournament where we lost in the, in the third place against Zambia and also lost in the semifinals against Morocco. It's, it's been an abysmal performance so far. And uh, there are question max and as well as major concerns on uh, how we are going to perform at the World Cup if uh, we've gone six games without a win. We're certainly not defeating of uh, the nine-time African champions. I mean, they are the highest ranked African team heading to the World Cup. And it's such a shame that we are not leaving up to the top in league. Just hopefully, let's see what we can do tomorrow against Colombia. But I can't believe that uh, Coach Juan Baldrum We'll still come out and see that uh, it is a learning call. That, that was his word. I, I'm going to quote him this morning that Nigeria is still learning. I mean, my time African champion is still learning. And the major competition is about four months' time. Uh, they are pressure max, and I'm really worried about the Super Falcons and their performance heading to the World Cup. Uh, looking at the fact that, you know, those lost to Mexico, what exactly do you think that uh, the Super Falcons were not doing? and can do, you know, before that game in four months? The Super Falcons were not just Mexico. If you follow the highlights of that game, you see that it was Mexico from the first blast of the whistle. And uh, it was just a matter of time until uh, they, uh, they got the, the, the first goal by uh, Kena Palacios in the 85th minute. No chances created. Maybe they'll say it was because of uh, the absence of the tallest woman, uh, Ashisha Roshola, who, according to my reports, she's not in camp yet. Uh, but we don't really need Ashisha Roshola. She's doing great in Barcelona. We need to get the other departments working because Ashisha is someone you can bang on if she has the chance. She will take it. But what happens to the defense line? What happens to the midfield? What happens to the creative part of uh, the team? So, uh, question marks everywhere, every department, everything is not just forming well, but, you know, there's always a chance for improvement. And uh, I, I'm very sorry, it is getting really late. It's getting really late. The World Cup is in July, and we need to do things right right now. Mercy, you can remember, Nigeria are in uh, Group B, alongside footballing nations like Canada, and as well as the host nation, Australia. So, for us to beat this World Cup teams, we need to get our preparation sport on. And that's going to start in this revelation, uh, revelation call. I mean, the only positive we can pick out of that game um, uh, two days ago was we lost by just a goal margin. But the passage of play, uh, how everything went, it was not in favor of the Super Falcons. And I'm just hoping they can do well, but there are also still question marks on the coach. Can he take Nigeria for, uh, forward? I don't think so. All right. Um, Amanda, we're not reading too much into this loss. Bearing in mind it's, uh, it's just a 1 0 defeat, and uh, the goal came in the uh, 85th minute of, uh, of, of the match. You know, it's, it's it probably were so close, you know, we can, we can say that it was so close to, you know, uh, drawing this game. Uh, it's a friendly tournament. Last time I was here with you, we we're talking about the fact that uh, the plan was to give every single you know, player a chance to uh, justify their inclusion in the forthcoming uh, World Cup. So um, it, it's a friendly tournament. You know, they're experimenting, giving different players a chance to, to show why they should be included in the team going to the World Cup. 1-0, um, consider the goal in 85 minutes. Is, is it that bad? You know, I know it's a sixth consecutive loss for the, for the, for the Falcons, but it's a friendly tournament. Shouldn't we just calm down? allow them get themselves together and then judge them by their performance when they go to the main tournament. Coffee, a win is a win, a loss is a loss. It's certainly going to affect your standings on the FIFA table, right? And uh, I, would, I would quite understand with Coach Wandy Waldrum if we got wins in our previous games, but this is a sixth consecutive game without a win. Major concerns, uh, Kofi. I know it's a friendly tournament. It's a tournament where 
the value of the games or in the workout of other players, in the discovering of other talents. But we can get wins. I mean, I, like how I told Mercy that there was nothing wrong with us getting beaten by goals in your box. Something was wrong with we were playing. We were playing no creativity, no stability in that midfield. We were struggling to create chances. And I'm not even talking about not competing the chances, creating the chances at first. It was not just what's coming for Nigeria. And that was where the problem. Mexico is not even a big country when it comes to female football. They are not even on the same level as the likes of Sweden, uh, is it England or United States. I'm not even talking about Germany. These are a country that they are still growing their football, their female football. But how come they were able to get a one year win and they played much better? with a very domineering position. So that's where I have problems with. Uh, but, but let's delve into, you know, the Flying Eagles and look at how they are faring in terms of, you know, their training and uh, the fact that they are set to beat the records, you know, just do better and keep it up at that. Do, do you think that they have what it takes in shape mentally and in all ramification to move out? <laughs> But they got all it takes in the Arsenal to, to go out there and make Nigeria proud. I mean, the first tournament in 2023 that had Africa competing was the Chan uh, where Senegal won. And it was quite a shame that we didn't have Nigeria right there. So now that we have Nigeria, and it's just in uh, the second month of the year in uh, Egypt, where the flying hills are picked alongside the likes of uh, Zambia, Egypt, uh, as well as Senegal, they, they are trying to do greatly. And when you take a look at their preparatory games, they've done well. They've not lost any. And the last one was uh, in Morocco, where they beat a Cow Cup Athletic a Club, a local club in Morocco, by six goals to one. And they also beat Congo Brazzaville two goals to one. So with the preparation so far, the trajectory looks like everything is favoring the honor 20. And they're the seven-time African champions, Marcy. And they have pretty great heading into this tournament. So let's just wait for the best to come, you know. It's always different from the preparation to what happens on the pitch of play. It could be that Senegal is a big game, two days now against Senegal. And uh, we just hope and uh, believe that they can make Nigeria proud. Um, are you confident uh, that uh, the fact that, uh, that in the job uh, and uh, the ability of uh, Coach Ladan Boso to, to deliver, let's look at the coach and his, uh, his pedigree. What is about the fact that we have uh, someone who's been there before? Uh, and, and achieved some things in the past. Can he deliver for Nigeria? He said that, you know, Nigerians should look at the performance of the team in the matches leading up to the World Cup. For instance, uh, you know, the Waffle B tournament and all that. So, do you think Ladan Boso can deliver? He can deliver for certain, but I'm telling him not to really back on uh, preparatory games because most of them were. Uh, from uh, Nigerian clubs here, Nigerian academy, not very big teams. And they were supposed to take on South Sudan, who are also in the tournament, and as well as Benin Republic, but, uh, and as well as even uh, Cap uh, Central African Republic. But these countries did not turn up. So we had to play just against Congo, Brazzaville, and as well as uh, Kaukau Athletic of Morocco. So we, we, we've gotten the wins. We've gotten the momentum going into this game, but I would advise not to bank on this preparation range because they didn't come against top teams. And the Nations Cup, you are going to play against the host nation Egypt. They're going to come with a different ball game. They're going to play against Senegal, who are the recent uh, uh, winners of Chan. So it's going to be very difficult, but just like you said, the man, Lavan Bosu, has got pedigree, has got reputation as far as Nigerian football is concerned, uh, as far as uh, uh, age great football is concerned. And Nigeria being seven-time champions, he only has one option. Just one option, and that's go there and get the call. Well, uh, Monday, we have to, you know, let it uh, go at this point in time. Thank you so much for being part of the show this morning. We do appreciate your time, and we look forward to share, sharing your thoughts as we uh, move closer, uh, you know, to the end of February and see how uh, the teams are actually faring uh, at the end of the day. All right. On to the next, Nigeria Law, the Super Falcons. I'm not really sure about them, but I'm pretty sure the honor 20 finding goals will make us proud. All right, and you're sure they're going to get to the semifinals. That's by the fact that uh, they're in a group containing the Cub Lions of Senegal, and they're going to face the hosts as well, um, Egypt. I mean, you know, you know what it means to play Egypt 
in at the Cairo International Stadium. You know what it means. It's going to be I as know, if you are going for I war. Know. It's a tough I group. Know, it's I a know. tough group, isn't it? I mean, when it comes to age grade football, it's not just about the under twenty. You go back to under seventeen because I mean, football is a series. It's in sequence. Your under your under seventeen is as good as your under twenty because these are the, the players graduating from this particular class to the next. So with the under seventeen graduating to under twenty, with us being the world champions five times and with us being the African champions seven times, this will come out to play, and I think we're going to beat Senegal and as well as Egypt. Well, that's it, Monday Thomas. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we appreciate your time. And that's the size of our conversation this morning on The Breakfast. We'll definitely return on Monday, all things being equal, you know, mm. to have uh, more interesting headlines. I mean, it's been very great to know that you've been with us despite all odds. We ask that you stay safe. Very important. We also ask that uh, you uh, be ready to go out on the 25th of February. 2023, I mean, so far, all things being equal, that you go out and cast your vote in a very peaceful manner and observe all of the protocols. Kofi. Yes, indeed. All right, uh, we'll be back next week. My name is Kofi Bartels. Please follow us on our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And there's a second account, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Enjoy the wonderful content. We have content for almost every platform. Our website is also available for you uh, where you can get the latest information and news right there on the internet. See you on Monday. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bopo. We join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Please stay with us. Good morning.